What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Just wanted to do this video on uh, my new trailer, my new uh, pressure washing trailer. There it is. So basically, today and tomorrow is going to be spent taking all this stuff off of my 5x8 flimsy trailer, as you can see. This thing like rocks and rolls every time you hit anything in the road. So I'm going to be selling this one and uh, putting everything on this new 12 foot by six and a half foot trailer. So I just picked it up this past weekend, a few days ago. It's a tandem axle. It's got electric brakes and it's got a bulldog style hitch. It's not Bulldog brand, but uh, it's a Chinese Bulldog. But anyway, it's got the regular old, I guess, cheap, normal jack on it. Whoa, neighbors are crazy. It's got a really nice uh, brace spare tire mount right here. I've seen a lot of manufacturers just weld a, a small U-bolt onto the side of the frame or something and this is a lot stronger. Uh, it came with 15 inch radial tires, they're 205, 75, 15. And it's got boxed in LED lights. They're boxed in to protect them from hitting stuff and breaking them off. I'm actually gonna paint this thing. I did a little test spot, it's kinda hard to see because the sun is like that way, whatever. But it's gonna be like a green color, a bright green. So, I got a lot of work to do. I went and bought some steel. Some uh, inch and three quarter, I think it's 14 gauge wall steel to build a little ladder rack. Took the old D-runner up to the steel shop. So, basically I'm gonna spend about half the time trying to figure out where I'm gonna put everything before I start welding this ladder rack on. So, uh, We'll see you when I start cutting and welding. All right, guys, so I've kind of got it mocked up. I uh, made these, I cut these upward pieces 38 inches each. So I got to put a crossbar on them, weld them up, put some braces in them. Uh, hopefully I can get this part of it done tonight so I can paint it tomorrow. Uh, today's Wednesday and it's supposed to rain Friday, so... I've got tonight and tomorrow to do all this. It's a lot of work, man. It's mostly a lot of thinking, like I said earlier, but oh well. But that's what I got so far. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's gotten dark out here. Um, I went ahead and uh, welded up, measured, cut, and welded the ladder racks. Um... I can't decide if I'm gonna put a bar from here to there, like on the sides or not. I know I'm at least gonna brace it. I've just got it held in place with these little magnets for now, but uh, I'm not gonna have anything super heavy on there right now. I've got a little 20 foot ladder and like some brushes and brooms and stuff like that. But uh, that's what I have so far. I still need to weld them to the trailer, but it got dark on me. And I just used my little flux core welder. Ooh, pretty. Let's check this one out. Uh, yep, perfect. So anyway, I didn't feel like moving this trailer out. In order to move this trailer, I would have had to move that one, then move this one outside then scoot my cart across the garage, plug everything in over there, run extension cords, hook gas up. I didn't feel like doing that. I got my trusty old Lincoln Weld Pack HD, turned it on uh, low two, set the wire feed speed at about eh, nine and a half or so. And uh, she's meant, she works real good. Had that welder probably 12 or 13 years now. First welder I ever bought, bought it brand new from Home Depot. 
works great. I'm using uh, .030 flux core wire. So that's what I got so far. Y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all. So this is what I got finished up last night. So I just cut these little, uh, they're eight inch long. That is, I think it's eighth inch or three sixteenths. I can't remember. Uh, flat bar, it's one inch wide. And I'm just gonna put some braces right there just to kind of stiffen it up. That part doesn't wobble as much as this one, but uh, I mean, it hardly wobbles. You gotta try to wobble it, but anyway. So I'm about to weld those in, all four corners on the inside. And I'm gonna make some little hooks out of some uh, quarter inch bar, flat or round stock that I have. And I'm gonna bend them and weld them on there somewhere. That way I can have uh, like a little hook to put my, kind of like these. Those right there on my truck ladder rack. That way I can put my bungee cords and tie downs and stuff like that on there. So wish me luck. Uh, go ahead and take a gander at those beautiful stacks of dimes right there. I mean, my God. Wow. Let's see here. Let me get a close-up. Wow. Oh, my God. That one has two beads on it. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. Let's check these out. Ooh, look at those. Oh my God, man, jeez, look at that one, that one's like a bubble gum, like a Tootsie Roll, pretty cool, but anyway, that's what I got so far, I think I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this thing up and uh, getting it ready for paint and paint it gonna get messy it's a lot of work man doing it by myself and uh, again I've got to take all I can't use my garage because I can't have all this stuff outside the neighborhood will get ticked off at me but I've got to take all this stuff off of this trailer and put it in the floor basically then get this trailer out of here then put everything yeah it's gonna be a mess so anyway I'm glad I got that done I may add some more to it later on but uh, that's what I needed for now, just something to hold all my brushes and squeegees and my ladder and uh, just whatever else I need to put up there. So anyway, y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all. I'm just kind of mocking up where I want my hose reels. And uh, after I finished bracing the ladder rack, I made some hooks out of some quarter inch rod or half inch, whatever the heck that is. I don't know, I'm not a freaking, I'm not a scientist, all right? Uh, basically stack some dimes on there. And there as well. 
and same thing over there little hooks that way I can put my bungee cords and stuff around them so anyway I'm in the mock-up stage right now I got to weld and uh, cut some brackets for the hose reels make sure everything fits on there real good once I do that uh, I'm gonna start painting and it's getting kind of cloudy it's about feels like it's about 85 degrees out here December 10th 2020 Conroe Texas got a couple clouds but it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow so uh, hopefully I can get this knocked out I'm trying to uh, get this last Titan hose reel off of here and uh, I think I'm gonna instead of having my pressure washer in the front of the trailer on this one I think I'm gonna mount it right there in the back that way it's easy to get to and uh, uh, it'll help evenly distribute some weight on the trailer once I have my tanks and all my other stuff up there so anyway that's what I got so far so uh, I'm gonna keep going all right y'all so I made these brackets on the side here so I can mount my hose reels. These are 10 inch, those are 10 inch, and those are five inches long. I've got to uh, set the hose reels on them and mark the holes and drill them. And uh, basically just doing mock up right now to make sure everything fits before I paint it. Make sure I don't paint it and then have to cut something off and re-weld it and paint it again. So. That's where I'm at. I'm about to put the old Lincoln flux core back up. I mean, my goodness, man. You want to talk about stacking dimes? My God. I'm just kidding. It's really hard to make uh, good welds with that thing. But I've welded a lot of stuff with it. And they always hold. It penetrates really good. So, you know, again, I didn't feel like moving all this stuff out of the way and digging that thing out and rolling it out into the driveway then packing it up when I'm done and all that so um, flux core it is but anyway I'm going to get to drilling some holes and uh, mounting everything up doing the mock up and I'm going to get to painting alright it's dark now still on day two here went to uh, Home Depot and they mixed me up a can of uh, exterior paint it's that color right there it's like a light gray which is what I wanted for the floor I'm gonna paint the floor last but uh, I already had this can in my garage and I like the color and I like how it lays down uh, it's 500 degree engine enamel paint so that's what I'm gonna paint the frame with you can kind of see it right there so Hopefully this thing just doesn't look absolutely ridiculous when I'm done with it, but uh, Home Depot is pretty cool. I mean, slap me sideways if they didn't give me a free stir stick with a little measuring tape on it and a free uh, paint can opener. What do you know? Pretty cool. Picked up some, uh, what the heck, what? Oh, let's get to the English side surface. What? A oh, rough surface scotch tape masking tape so I'm gonna start painting on this thing tonight hopefully I can get a lot done but I've got to wipe it down with some some kind of cleaner and get the dirt and stuff off of it and uh, I can't have this thing sitting in my driveway for a week so I got to get it get it done so here we go all right y'all I'm just kind of mocking up where I want my hose reels and uh, after I finished bracing the ladder rack I made some hooks out of some quarter inch rod or half inch whatever the heck that is I don't know I'm not a freaking I'm not a scientist all right uh, basically stack some dimes on there and there as well and same thing over there little hooks that way I can put my bungee cords and stuff around them. So anyway, I'm in the mock-up stage right now. I got to weld and uh, cut some brackets for the hose reels. Make sure everything fits on there real good. Once I do that, 
uh, I'm gonna start painting and it's getting kind of cloudy it's about feels like it's about 85 degrees out here December 10th 2020 Conroe Texas got a couple clouds it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow so uh, hopefully I can get this knocked out I'm trying to uh, get this last Titan hose reel off of here and uh, I think I'm gonna instead of having my pressure washer in the front of the trailer on this one I think I'm gonna mount it right there in the back that way it's easy to get to and uh, uh, it'll help evenly distribute some weight on the trailer once I have my tanks and all my other stuff up there so anyway that's what I got so far so uh, I'm gonna keep going Alright y'all, it's uh, day four since I've been working on this trailer, and uh, kind of a shadow there, but I've gotten most of it painted. I've still got to paint some uh, stuff up under there, and uh, just some little trim stuff, and i got to paint this side over here. But as you can see, there's no room over there, so I got to pull it out in my driveway. But I got the racks done; uh, those are all painted. I got to paint a little bit of that rail along the inside, and I got to paint the floor. So I had my shop vac in here, just kind of vacuuming the floor up, getting all the loose stuff off as I could. Uh, I've got my reels mounted, and I wanted to use stainless steel bolts but the bolts weren't the only stainless steel bolts i could find weren't threaded all the way up so i didn't use them i used zinc plated grade five so oh well they're cheaper anyway i could swap them out after a year or whatever if i need to but i got all of them all the brackets are welded on holes drilled hose reels mounted and uh see i got that part over there still to paint I left the inside of the uh, the light box housing thing, whatever, I left that black. Uh, I think a little bit of black will be good. It'll kind of match that hose reel and the tires and there'll be just a couple other little black things on it. I need to paint the inside of the fender wells. I'm about 90% sure I'm still going to paint those green. So. But I'm going to have to do that out in my driveway, I guess. But I really got to get this going. So that's where I'm at for right now. All right, y'all. So I pretty much got everything painted that I wanted to. I uh, still got some masking tape on a bunch of stuff. I've got some little touch-ups to do here and there. Um, I'm going to clean the floor and um, get the floor painted and i don't know when but i'm also gonna paint the inside of those fender wells i gotta clean them up there's a bunch of mud and stuff up in them it was raining the day i picked this thing up so but i was gonna leave the hitch black leave the uh jack black <laughs> jack black anyway uh so yeah I'm pretty happy with it. I actually pulled the wire out when I was trying to mask that light off. So I got to fix that. No big deal. But uh, also, something I was kind of surprised at was uh, they didn't paint the underneath side of this trailer. Kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, they painted like the top and the outside, but underneath there's no paint on most of it under there. So... I'm going to have to roll this thing over my car ramps or something and lift it up and uh, get up under there with a paintbrush and just slop some black paint or some primer or something on it. I don't want that metal to start rusting. So anyway, so that's what I got so far. And uh, again, still got some masking tape on the, like the light and stuff like that. I did kind of screw up because I didn't know that there was a little light up under there if you can see that and I painted over it so I might get some paint 
remover or something and just wipe it over that bulb that way it still lights up but you want to have uh, a little bit of black contrast that's why I left those parts black and um, you know I guess didn't want too much green but this thing's pretty freaking green so whether you like this color or not you're gonna see it so that's pretty much my intentions for this painting it this color this bright loud color like that because once I get my signs on here uh, I want it to stand out and catch attention you know it's like free advertising pretty much at that point so anyway I'm gonna I gotta take my stuff off of the little five by eight transfer it over to this one after I get the floor painted and let it dry tonight and uh, again what is this day four Ugh. And it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Anyway, all right. Here we go. Let me get that floor painted. All right, y'all, so I just got finished painting the floor and uh, I tried to slop it on as thick as I could and not get it on the sides, but there's like one little spot there and one little one right there where I got it. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. So this wood is just cheap, rough cut pine. It's pretty thick. And it's wide, so I know it'll hold for quite a while. I mean, I'll probably have to replace it in a year or two anyway. But I at least wanted to get a good top coat on it. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of that will run down in the cracks. But, again, when it comes time to replace it, I'm going to replace it with uh, uh, treated lumber. So, it'll be fine. But... I went with this uh, lighter color like this because when you spill SH or 
that's what we call it in the pressure washing business, uh, bleach basically. When you spill it and it dries, it leaves like a white, salty looking residue. And uh, I didn't want to paint the floor a dark color or stain it dark, paint it black, whatever, uh, because that stuff would immediately show up. And uh, I didn't want that to happen. I thought this was going to be a little bit more dark gray, but it came out a little lighter than I kind of wanted it to, but it'll still be fine. Um, I kind of wanted like the same, about the same color as the wheels, but again, it's cheap paint. It'll be fine for now. Uh, plus when, you know, when this thing, it gets really hot in Texas and, uh, when this thing's sitting out in the sun and you know, it's a hundred, 110 degrees outside, that white paint is going to be a lot cooler than a dark colored paint like black. So, you know, that's something whatever so anyway um i still got to build it out i've got to get the rest of my stuff off this little guy and uh you know my pressure washer's still on there and my tanks and get those mounted up so uh i'll finish it up with that all right y'all so here it is about i don't know a zillion years later and uh I got the trailer rack put together, got the floor painted, got the frame painted and all that. And uh, I had my four gallon a minute pressure washer on there and my soft wash system. And uh, I did a couple of jobs and then I got a call and got a contract to clean 16 shopping centers quarterly. So. Needless to say, I'm not going to do that with a, a little four gallon a minute pressure washer by myself. So I went out and bought some new equipment. I'm still setting everything up. But I actually got two of these heaters. It's a uh, Pressure Pro. It'll handle up to eight gallons a minute. Up to, I believe, 4,000 PSI. I believe that's either at maybe a uh, somewhere between a seven and 10 gallon diesel tank on there. But these are uh, 12 volt DC. So I'm gonna run them off my pressure washer batteries. Give you a little look inside of there. So anyway, this is my favorite part about them, honestly. So anyway, I got two of those. They only had one in stock. I ordered the other one. Um, I've got to move almost all of this stuff around. Excuse me. My buddy actually gave me a, it's either a 275 or a 325 gallon, uh, IBC tote. And I cleaned it off real good. I still got to rinse it out and, uh, get the inside cleaned out. But I got two eight gallon a minute pressure washers. They have uh, eight gallon a minute general pump pumps on them and each one has a honda gx 690 engine you know electric start all that so they're pretty nice hopefully they hold up for a while because spent a lot of money on all this stuff but uh, i went with these batteries these marine ever start deep cycle batteries Went with those for a real specific reason, and that's because they were the cheapest ones I could find. I uh, got some new hose, got 200 feet of new hose, because I'm running two washers now instead of just one. Um, but yeah, these are the industrial series washers. I know I'm kind of bouncing around here. Um, I actually went with the steel bases, or mounting plates, whatever you want to call them because I've heard that the aluminum ones, they, they are nicer, they're lighter, um, and they're more resistant to like corrosion and they don't rust and stuff like that. But with this type of vibration from V-twin engines like this and uh, all that pressure from those belts pulling on the pump and everything, I've heard that the, the mounting holes can get 
kind of egged out or wallowed out, whatever you want to call it, and you'll never get them lined up right and all that stuff. So that's one of the reasons I chose to go with these. Uh, and another reason they were in stock. So, you know, I called a few places around the Houston area where I live. And uh, some of these places really aren't close to me, but they know their stuff. But I gave them a shot and they were all telling me, you know, which was surprising because this is January, but they were all telling me they were like uh, one to two, maybe two and a half weeks out on getting all my equipment that I wanted. And I, I didn't want to wait that long to get these jobs started. So anyway, I'm going to start putting all this stuff where I want it and get it mounted and uh, continue on. Okay, so here it is. I don't know, a million and a half years later. Um, I pretty much got him where I want it on my trailer. Uh, I guess I'll start with this side over here. Pardon the wind noise. So, I mounted my pressure washers this way. And I've got my batteries right here. If you look, see if I can get a close up. I bought one of those, uh, it's like a restaurant style rubber mat with the little holes in it. Like you'd see in a kitchen floor of a restaurant or something like that. And I bought that so that the gas tanks and the batteries would have some kind of cushion and also some grip so they wouldn't be sliding around. And uh, I've got it mounted up under there too. I got two uh, scepter gas tanks. These are like Yamaha style quick connects. So I got these at Academy, but you can get them pretty much, pretty much you can get them online or any boat store. Um, I've got, you know, one tank for each pressure washer. I mounted my heaters right here. Um, I've got my whip hoses, you know, basically to where I can hook them up to a heater and then have my line going out. I've got one line going to my pressure hose reel over there. I haven't gotten another pressure hose reel yet because uh, that, but basically the reason that I wanted to go with separate pressure washers and heaters is because if something happens to one of the heaters or pressure washers or whatever, especially one of the heaters, I can take this off, drop it off at the shop and bypass the heater and just use cold water. That way I'm, I don't have a whole machine down just because something happened with the heater. Uh, so that's pretty much why I wanted to do that. But anyway, got my 275 gallon IBC tote. Um, I'm going to walk over here. I've got a spare tire too. I don't know if that was in the last part of the video, but, um, got my IBC tote. I used a banjo fitting and then plumbed it into all two inch. Uh, that's my dump valve right there. I probably should have just went straight two inch all the way out, but I wanted to be able to, uh, if I wanted to fill up a bucket of water or something like that and mix up, you know, whatever, this line comes right over here and I can pull it out and it goes, you know, away from my trailer so I can wash my hands with it or rinse my muddy boots off or like I said, mix, mix something else. So I've got it basically a four-way. So that's my dump valve. Uh, this is going into this machine. And I've got these filters plumbed in right here. That's one inch inner diameter braided hose. Um, I've got this, I put a bushing or reducer in here from two inch to one inch. And I got a one inch nipple going there. And then, uh, you know the filter and then it goes into the uh goes into the pressure washing pump 
So I basically wanted to make everything to where it's easily removable, repairable, installable, so on and so forth. I uh, actually picked up a new tip. The old one I bought at Walmart like a year and a half ago was falling apart, so I ordered this Ryobi one. So I've been wanting to try one of those. Haven't used it yet, but I heard they're pretty good. Uh, same old hose reels I had on my old trailer. Um, I mounted my soft wash pump here, and I've got my hoses ran right there, and there is my what do you call them drop sticks and I went and bought this strong way this is this cart is supposed it's supposed to hold uh, 400 feet of 5 8 hose right now I think I've got either three or four hundred feet of uh, three quarter inch Harbor Freight hose you know I really wanted to go with three quarter inch flexzilla, but it's anywhere from like seventy to a hundred dollars for a hundred footer, and these are about thirty two dollars after the coupon at Harbor Freight for a hundred footer. So, you know, kind of balling on a budget here. So I'll eventually upgrade, but for now these work fine. I get plenty of flow out of them. Uh, this probably isn't going to be permanent either. But it beats the heck out of rolling up three and four hundred feet of hose at a time with your hands. So uh, it's okay for now. But let's see. I got my PVC pipes up here with my stainless hose clamps. Got those mounted to the uh, IBC tank. And I threw some bungee cords on here to hold them tight. That way they won't come out of the, uh, the pipes, obviously. So, that's pretty much it, man. You got a little bit of room in there. This isn't really, uh, nothing on here is really permanent. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what works best for me and what I, how I can maximize room and all that kind of stuff and storage space, so... Uh, when I bought this 12 foot trailer, I didn't have this big contract that I got. And uh, if I would have known for sure that I, I've been working on this, getting this contract for about a year. And if I would, would have known for sure that I was getting it, I probably would have went with a 14 foot trailer. But it still works, you know. It holds everything I need it to for now. Uh, I've got a lot of other stuff. I've got that tub with some safety equipment in it. Uh, some extra water hose, buckets, chemicals, that kind of stuff, um, and my other surface cleaner. So, um, I don't really have anywhere to put that on this trailer right now. I might weld some more brackets or something on there just to hold everything. But, uh, you know, we'll see. It's a work in progress, but it's, for right now, it's finished. It's made me a lot of money. I actually went and did a driveway for $180 this morning. It took me like an hour. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So, anyway, that's my video. I appreciate y'all watching my channel. And uh, if you'd be so kind, go ahead and click like and subscribe. Maybe even uh, click that little notification bell so you know when I come out with a new video. And uh, if y'all have any questions or anything... Feel free to let me know and I'll answer them as best as I can. Thanks a lot, guys.